All right, now pause for a moment. I'm about to do a lot of algebraic work on uh, this equation that you can see here. However, there are a few things that I can do to make all of that algebraic soup a little easier to wade through. For starters, everything that I'm gonna do to x, right? I'm gonna do some expansion and some simplifying, obviously, and I wanna try and get towards something like this. Um, though you will know because I've got zero here and I don't have zero here, I'm gonna to have to add things to both sides. And that accounts for the difference between what you can see on my result that I'm desiring and um, what I'm starting with here. But hopefully you can see that everything here with x's is equivalent to everything you can see here with y's, right? Like literally uh, this, this statement here, this, oopsie daisy, this expression here is identical to this expression here, except I've switched X's for Y's. So everything that I'm going to do in terms of manipulating symbols, I don't really need to do it twice and just write it once for X's and write it another time for Y's. Everything I need to do, I can just do it once and then just kind of repeat that, that argument. So it's a little bit like, you know, this argument that I made here with the alphas and the betas being, you know, I would say similarly, I don't have to write the whole um, piece of logic there and I'm going to do the same thing here with my algebra. So um, I don't need to do it twice. The other thing that I want to point out is um, because of the way that I have created this situation, right? I've got um, this is an x coordinate, this is a y coordinate, so is this. It's a fairly standard way to call this x1, y1 because I've, I've got more than one x coordinate, more than one y coordinate. So I obviously don't want to mix them up. However, because I'm going to be writing with these a lot, it's going to be easier for me if I don't have subscripts flying around. I'm going to have quadratics as well. So what I'm going to do is instead of calling this x1 and x2, just temporarily to make it easier for me to handle, I'm going to call this x1 u, and sorry, yeah, and the x2 I'm going to call v. It's just going to make it easier for me to uh, write and, and say as well. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to consider, and I'll do this in orange because um, uh, you can follow the flow of argument a little more easily. So having done this substitution here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say consider uh, just this thing we have on the left, x minus x1, or what did I say? I'm replacing it with a u, that's what I want. x minus u, x minus v, and consider if I just had that, and just that was equal to zero. Now obviously, this is not actually true, I really have these y's flying around, but I just wanna see what happens here when I manipulate the algebra, okay? Now again, I'm heading towards a quadratic of some kind. So let's get that quadratic there. Um, and I'm going to do that by expanding everything out. So you can see I've got x squared minus uh, ux uh, vx. They're both negative, just watch those signs. And then the double negative uh, becomes a positive when I multiply them together. So I've got uv there, and that's equal to zero. Now I can tidy this up just a teeny little bit, again to make the quadratic a little more obvious. You can see here that I've got an x squared. I can factor out that x and that gives me a u uh, minus u minus v, but I've, I've even factored out the minus sign as well, plus the x. And before I write the rest of the line here, I just want to pause for a minute, right? Where am I headed? This is one of the tricky things um, that really taxes your working memory and your cognitive load when you're doing any kind of um, proof like this, you always want to keep one eye on the algebra that you're manipulating so you don't make any mistakes, but you also want to keep one eye on what your destination is, like where are you headed, okay? Now this is the part of my equation that has to do with the x's, and what you can see here is it's a perfect square. I don't have a perfect square here or here, right? So what I wanna do is create a perfect square and we have an algebraic technique that allows us to do that when you're starting with something that isn't a perfect square. And it's called completing the square. Like what I've got here, if I were to draw a diagram, it's like a square with a piece missing from it. And I've, I've taught this and I've got videos for it. I might link them below so you can see them. So that's why I'm thinking completing the square will be a useful strategy to do here because I wanna get uh, a perfect square, uh, this, this, thing, this thing here, and I don't have one, so I'm gonna have to make it, right? Now to make that a little bit simpler for me, to make the perfect square, I will just leave this set of terms over here, and I will move that UV, or I'll subtract that UV from both sides. All right, now I might as well just use this line of working to carry it on here, right? If I just focus here, Completing the square is about adding a certain constant to both sides of an equation such that what you have on the left-hand side is the expanded version of 
uh, a perfect binomial square, right? So what is that thing? Well, you have to look at uh, the, this coefficient in here and what you wanna do, if I have a look at this coefficient in here, you may recall if you've uh, learned completing the square recently, um, or if you learned it a long time ago, but you did it so many times, it's still in your memory. What you wanna do with that coefficient is halve it and square it, halve it and square it. So when I halve it, what I get is u plus v over two, u plus v over two, and then I square it. That's it. This is the theme that I add to both sides. So if I take this and duplicate it over here, uh, I have an equation that is still true, it's still all balanced because I add the same thing to both sides. Now what I've got on the left hand side is a perfect square. If you can't quite see it, the whole idea here is that if I've got something like say, or well, there's a minus sign there, so it's a minus 2ab plus b squared. The thing that we just added was this b squared here, okay? Um, this is going to be equal to uh, a minus b all squared. And you can see why I added this thing here. It's, it's, it's added because whatever you get over here, even if there's a minus sign, it's gonna end up positive, right? So here's my perfect square. What I need to do is just do the a minus b part of it, right? So what I can do is I can say, oh, this is, this is the a and this is the b, okay? So I'll have, uh, x take away u plus v on two, and that's all squared. And you can verify for yourself if you like that uh, when you take this and you expand it out, you will end up with this thing over here. Okay, now I've successfully created that perfect square I wanted on the left, but I've got a bit of a mess over here on the right. So let's let's work on that, shall we? Um, the first thing I notice is that this UV, right? This well, minus UV, right? There's gonna be some UV terms in here once I expand them out. So it's in my interest to actually, um, even though it's simple when it is in a factorized form, if I expand it out, I can collect some like terms. I also notice this is a minus, so I'm gonna um, shift the order of this to make it a little easier to read. So just so you can follow where this comes from, right? I'm going to uh, write this in purple so you can see where it comes from. I'm going to, uh, let's write that as um, one over two squared is a quarter. So I'm squaring that out, that's expanded now. And then I'm gonna square the numerator. So this is gonna be u squared plus two uv. There's that uv term that I wanna uh, collect like terms with. And then there's gonna be a v squared as well. That is take away uv. Right, now this is all one line together now, so I'm gonna stop writing them as separate colors. Hopefully you can see here that if I want to uh, collect like terms here, uh, this UV needs to make it inside the brackets, but there's a quarter at the front, right? So this is, uh, if you wanna think about it this way, this part here is the same as uh, a quarter times four UV. You see how that the quarter and the four, they just cancel out. So if I, I consider this UV as a quarter times four UV, now I have this constant, um, or rather this uh, common factor of a quarter. So I'll write that quarter out the front. And then I've got U squared plus two UV plus V squared. Uh, take away the four UV that I just uh, got from here. Okay, so you can see that's snuck in and I'm going to get uh, these terms here, which are going to collect. So let's keep on doing that algebraic work. Uh, U squared minus two UV now plus V squared. And what's great is this came from a uh, perfect square and it's now ended up as a different perfect square. This is actually something that comes up a lot algebraically when you're doing proofs like this. So it's uh, not U plus V all squared. That minus in there means that I've got um, a quarter of U minus V all squared, okay? So uh, as, a, as a final sort of note, you can see that uh, I can sort of, I, I, I squared a half uh, here, here to become a quarter at the front, just so I can deal with this separately. But now that I've got a perfect square back, I can put that quarter back in as one over two squared. So you can see that this is actually uh, u take away v on two all squared, right? So you can see that numerator becomes the u minus v all squared here, and then the denominator becomes the quarter out the front. So this is great. What I've got here, <laughs> we don't need to have that there. Uh, what you can see here is I've got that left-hand side over there, which is the perfect square I wanted, and then I have something over here on the right-hand side which compensated for what I had to add. 
Okay, now uh, let's think about what this means. What are the implications for the original working that we were doing? Well, let's remember what U and V were substitutes for. I'm gonna go back into black because that's how I wrote this, right? So here's the U and the V that I had before. Let me just copy this and put it nearby just so that I can see it. Okay, so remembering that, what I can say is, well, if I don't write it as U's and V's anymore because I just did that for convenience, right? What I've got is X minus uh, U is X1, V is X2, that's all divided by two. That's squared, and then what I have on the right-hand side is a subtraction, so it's X1 minus X2 all over two squared. Okay, 